the Wardell motorcycle was made by my great grandfather in the 1920s. Initially, his father had a motorcycle shop repairing motorcycles and bicycles. My great grandfather was a very inquisitive nature and technical, and he, along with his brother, then decided to build their own Wardell motorcycle. At the time, all motorcycles had two stroke engines, and he decided that in order to get the best out of a two-stroke engine there needed to be some form of supercharging. So what he did was he developed a bespoke engine that we believe was the first ever supercharged two-stroke motorcycle engine. He created his own bike, his own motorcycle brand and it looked like it was going to be very successful. They registered a limited company with shareholders they had adverts in magazines, so they were advertised alongside the likes of Triumph and Velocet, which was a big company back in the day. They did the London to Exeter trial in it. You can imagine in the 1920s on Boxing Day, riding from London to Exeter and then ride back, which is a massive jaunt. They did the track twice and won two gold awards, so it's two consecutive years. For quite a while, they had sack loads of mail from all over the world, as far as well as Australia and New York, different parts of America. People wanted to buy the bike. It got to a point then that they looked, needed a bit of financial investment, so they managed to get two investors to come over from America, two chaps called Pryor and Bethel, and it was to be the bike's big debut. They hired the Brooklyn's racetrack and planned to run the bike on the racetrack in front of the, the investors. For whatever reason, Brooklyn's decided that instead of my great-grandfather riding the bike, that it would be better to have one of the Brooklyn's test riders because they knew the track. So that decision was made. Unfortunately, the test rider crashed it in front of the two backers from America. Things were a bit different back in those days. There was one chance. They blew their chance, and as far as we know, that's the end of the Wardell story. Yeah, that was it. 91 years later, I decided that what I wanted to do was to relaunch the Wardell Motorcycle Company and produce a modern road going version of the bike that my great-grandfather first built in the 1920s. So this is the Kodak box with the three glass slides that have sat in my grandfather's wardrobe since I was a child, with nobody really knowing much about what was inside other than three, there was three glass slides. Nobody really talked much about them, and it was only in recent years that I decided to um, find out about what is inside them. Uh, specifically this slide here, which is a picture of a motorcycle and it's this that I uh, had enlarged and used as the basis of what is now my new company. The second slide is of the patented supercharged two-stroke motorcycle engine that was the foundation of the Warden motorcycle. The uh, third and final slide is of the original Wardell workshop where my great-grandfather's passion for motorcycles started and it's these three slides and knowing the passion that my great-grandfather had is what's driven me to start my project and my journey in recreating their motorcycle and their brand. Most of the stuff that Mark has done he's always done on his own so you know to achieve where he's got to today is all down to him and his own ambitions and what he does so you know all credit to him you know he's done really really well he doesn't switch off at all from the bike the bike at the moment is always in his head something i've learned really about my brother is that when he's passionate about something he really does invest himself completely in the project and i think just the fact that he's sort of been so dogged about getting it done and it just being so passionate about it and wanting to see the bike brought to a new generation, I just think is amazing.
biking wasn't something that he was really interested in in the past, but I think the, the story of the bike, I think that really sort of captured his imagination and he thought this is something I can sort of involve my family history and my, my interest in sort of engineering and marry the two together and hopefully sort of make something that will sort of be rolled out to the masses in the future. He knows now quite a lot about different vintage bikes, what parts come on them, what size of the wheels, tyres. He's accumulated quite a bit of knowledge. When he comes down here, it's, it's the bike. Whenever you speak to Mark, there's always something with the bike. We can't have a conversation without the bike coming in, into that uh, conversation, definitely. It wasn't as if I just took out a bank loan and just said, right, I'm building a bike and paid somebody to do it. Uh, a lot of blood, sweat and tears and late nights and early mornings have gone into creating the bike. There's a lot of, been a lot of determination, a few arguments and, and upsets along the way. And I'm proud of everything I've done and for the people who've helped me as well. It's there, it's built, it's ready, but I've yet to hear it run. Um, we've got a couple of electrical gremlins that are causing us issues at the moment. So no, I haven't heard it run yet. I've sat on it. I've. Uh, rolled it down a hill and the brakes work uh, but so far I've never heard the engine run. So today we're going to see the uh, bike for the first time. It's been rolling road tuned uh, so by the end of the day it should be rideable for the first time ever really. I'm <laughs> excited and nervous because it's going to get to a point where someone has to ride it and uh, so far it's just been something we push around and look at but having to physically being able to ride it just it makes it I don't know a little bit more real it's a bit um, when you start riding it you can you can crash it and I don't want it to I, I don't know sometimes I just think it'd be nice to just stand and look at it um, but yeah it's we've got to I got to ride, got, got to ride it, so yeah, very nervous, very, very nervous, but excited and nervous, but mostly nervous. So we've just had a rolling road done on the bike for the first time. The bike is running as good as it will be, it's, well, it's running perfectly. Um, everything went to plan. Ben has just taken the first ride on the bike because I was not brave enough to. What was it like seeing someone ride the bike for the first time ever? I'll admit I shed a little tear. It was, uh, it was quite, yeah, it was beautiful actually. It was just, it was nice to see it being ridden. It's got the period feel, which is the most important thing, because this bike is all about how it looks and how it feels to ride. Um, and the initial tests are to say that it has achieved that perfectly. So. Um, I just, I think I need to go somewhere quiet on my own and maybe have a ride of it on my own. Um, 
Yeah, but it's uh, it's. I feel like it's been a long journey, and it's it's getting where it should be. So it's, I'm really, really, really happy. Really happy. Lots of people say, you know, what a pretty bike it is, you know, and it is, it's a beautiful bike. So I really do hope that, yeah, it's something that people will, 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 will buy in the future, yeah. I'll be honest with you, it feels absolutely superb. Feedback I get from other people, their jaws drop when I tell them the story and, and they, they, they listen to me and, and want to hear the full story of what's happening and where it's going. And for me, that, that makes it all worthwhile. It's, um, it's been a lot of hard work over the last couple of years doing it and trying to convince people that you know, it's, it's the right thing to do, but it's what I wanted to do. So it, it makes me feel very proud and, and I hope people sort of uh, like it. And so far, they seem to. It's, it's, they've been very encouraging. It doesn't sometimes feel, feel real that I've actually done it. Uh, I sort of stand in the garage and look at the bike and think, Wow, that's, that's mine, and uh, there's only one in the world. Um, hopefully more in the future. There will be more in the future. But yeah, it feels good. I think my great-grandfather would be very proud of me to carry on his, his legacy, I guess. We're just at the start of it. Yeah, he's built the bike, but um, he's really ambitious about what he's going to do. So, oh no, we're definitely just at the start. Yeah, go and have some fun. What he's done is amazing. I mean, if it hadn't have been for Mark, I think the Wardill motorbike would have just gone down in the annals of history and would have been sort of forgotten about, to be honest with you. I think our great-grandfather, he would be really proud now and I think they would probably love to see that their design has kind of stood the test of time, really. What I'm doing is taking what my great-grandfather did and continuing on that journey. So there was never ever a conversation about using a different logo on the side of the tank, a different name. And that's why it's the Wardill 4, is because this was the next one in the line, so that's what it had to be. I started out with a one, one picture of a motorcycle cell taped to my garage wall, which I placed a, a, the engine in front of to make sure it fitted. Um, and from there, I've created a fully road legal motorcycle. To be reviving something that my great-grandfather started 91 years ago is, is quite overwhelming really, I suppose. It's um, something that I just decided I wanted to do. I didn't really think of what I was doing at the time. I, to me, I was making a motorcycle. Um, but yeah, the, the, when I think of what I've actually done and what I'm doing, it's, it's, it's pretty special. I think he'd be happy, I think he'd be proud. He'd be glad to see that the Wardill logo is back on a petrol tank and would be flying down the road, uh, carrying people and making people happy.